Hello, my floss tube friends. It's time for another episode. How is everybody doing? Happy Friday and happy fun Friday floss tube weekly update from me. I'm Annie Joyfield Stitcher, both here on YouTube and on Instagram. And you have reached my channel and video about cross stitch and some other crafts as well. So first let me say welcome back to anybody who is a returning viewer, a returning subscriber. Thank you so much for being back here again with me on a Friday night or whenever you're watching this. And to anyone who is new, welcome. I hope you enjoy seeing what I've worked on this week, seeing some of the stashy stash that I'm acquiring, hearing about plans, and even maybe some other crafts here and there smattered throughout. So. Today is floss tube number 57, and it is Friday, June 19th, 2020. It is Juneteenth in the United States. And I would encourage you, if you don't know what Juneteenth is, to do a little research because there's a lot of history behind it. So what do we have today? Well, we have some whips. I had a finish. I did not have any starts. Yay, go me. I have a little bit of plans, a little bit of stash, and then at the very end we'll do some life update. So first things first, let me remind you, or let me just say, if you have not watched last week's video, Floss Tube number 56, please go and do so if you are a subscriber and would like to participate in my um, 2K subscriber celebration. I am doing six giveaways where I am sharing some of my favorite items and I would love it if you would enter to win. I'm going to pick those next Friday on video number 58. So let's see. I had on here thank yous. So I want to say thank you very much to everybody who is a subscriber, those who like and comment, and especially those who commented last week, not just with the numbers, but with some really super kind and thoughtful comments. Um, congratulating me on 2,000 subscribers, congratulating me on, you know, a little over a year on FlossTube, um, just sharing how much joy this community brings to you, not just my videos, but everybody else's. I loved hearing where you found me from, and so I have to give some thank yous to um, the Sunshine Stitchers. A lot of folks found me through them. Um, I did a video a couple weeks ago and filmed with them on a Zoom call. And if you've not checked that out, they're doing a whole series of inviting other floss tubers and it's super fun. Um, I came after Erin Tumor and he, Stitcher. She was two weeks before me. Then there was Married with Stitches. Uh, Half Stitch Cross Stitch has been on. And then I don't know who's gonna be this week. So we'll have to wait and see. Anywho, so thank you to Gary, Shelia, and EJ for inviting me to be part of that and just being so uplifting to me and so kind and thoughtful. And of course to Ronnie for all the bags and for your positivity as well. Here is Sunshine Stitcher too. And then I also have to give a big thank you to the other kind of power team of Just Keep Stitching. That is Pam and Steph, mother and daughter team. If you are not watching them, please go and watch them. They are a hoot and a half, and I love watching them every week. I am a terrible commenter, ladies. I watch on the big screen because I like to see up close and personal, and so I don't always comment, but I love your videos. They're some of my first ones to watch right when they upload, and I will continue to be super big fans of y'all. I cannot wait until StitchCon 2021 so I get to hug your necks. And I cannot thank them enough for just being so wonderful to me. Um, they mention me occasionally in their videos and I am over the moon thrilled that, that they want me as part of their, their kind of stitchy family. Speaking of hugs, I haven't given them a hug this week. So if you're in need of a hug, here's a hug from Annie. Mm -mm. There's your hug for the week. Sorry to those of you who last week and the week before were like, you forgot, and then you were like, no, I didn't, I don't, didn't forget. Okay, I might have forgotten for a moment, but I have not forgotten entirely. I've done the hug now. And I love that y'all love the hug. And I love that you love the singing, 
because those are things that are just not going to go away. So this week has been filled with some stitchy goodness. I pulled back out a project that has been kind of in time out because it had some frogging that needed to be done on it and it didn't end up being as much frogging. So that was awesome. Um, I really sat down and evaluated where I had gone wrong and it wasn't that much. It was maybe 60, 70, 100 stitches at the most. And then I put in a ton of work on that this week and I'm now back obsessed. Um, I have worked on, I've spun my wheel to come up with some projects to work on throughout the week. Um, I am going to hold off on showing diamond painting until next week. Um, I only completed just that square that I was working through um, that I showed y'all at on last week's video. So I will show that next week. Um, there's just not enough progress on it. I stitched, a, uh, I stitched more than I diamond painted this week. And I've got some stash. Um, I've got a lot of floss to show because my floss clubs all came this week, which was exciting. And there's some really cool stuff going on in the stitchy community right now. Um, there's some great sows going on. Um, I'll talk about one of them when I get to the project that I'm using to participate in the sow. Um, we're getting close to July, which means I know a lot of people are fleshing out their plans for Jolly July or Joan Elliott July or whatever it is that you're doing for July. It's kind of another fun activity. I am going to be working on Christmas whips. And so I need to get them all out, figure out where I am on them, get my wheel set up and figure that out and decide if I'm going to have any starts. I don't know. I know that I would like to start Nativity Row uh, and there's a couple other that I might want to start, but I don't know. We'll see. I had so many starts in May. I have had so many starts this year, but I also joined, there's another movement going on, um, but not movement. It's not really a movement. There's another idea for next year, for 2021, and it was started by, I believe the virtual stitchers were who started talking about it, but now they've created a group. I will link it below, um, and you can say that you heard about it from me if you'd like, because that's one of the questions when you want to join the group on Facebook, but it's No New Starts 2021, and there's like a buy-in. It's not very much. I think it's $5 or something like that. Um, there's more logistics coming out soon, but there's going to be, you have to like ha show your whips. There's going to be like some hard and fast rules about this, but the ultimate goal is to not start anything in the year 2021. And I'm kind of all for that, but it kind of means that there's a lot of things I want to have available to me. Like I have a lot of kitted things. I have a lot of charts that I really am excited about. It might mean more starts now so that next year I can make it through here on just whips. We'll see. Um, it doesn't mean you can't buy things. It just means you can't start anything. But I will link that below. I link everything in the description box. Um, last week it was up on Saturday. I can guarantee you it'll be up tomorrow at some point. Um, hopefully in the morning. Um, and I try to link as much as I can. So because I know that when I watch a video and I'm like wait what was that again? I like to, like, if there's a description box, that's really helpful. But I know that not everybody does that, and that's totally cool. Um, I I enjoy that from a stitcher, uh, from a watcher standpoint. So I see the time and energy that I put into it. I know that some of y'all have, have used the links, and so that's good. And I don't do affiliate links or anything like that. I just know that from your comments, you've been using the links. I've talked for nine minutes and not shown any stitching. So I think it's time we show some stitching, right? Okay. So we're gonna start with my finish. And it it wasn't like, it's not some whopping huge finish. It does live in a pouch that I sewed up. Um, and this is a fantastic chart. I started this chart, I started this stitch last October 14th. And the reason why I decided to do this is for the month of October, uh, Darling Whimsy Designs, um, they're on, she's on Etsy, sold this chart called Forget Me Not. It says, Forget Me Not, My Dear, My Darling. And the proceeds from it went to um, Alzheimer's research. And my great grandmother, my Nan, I called her Nan, um, did not ever have fully diagnosed Alzheimer's, but had um, very progressive and very severe dementia. And I just saw how that impacted her and everyone around her. And her birthday was October 14th. And so I started this on her birthday. 
it languished way too long. It didn't need to wait this long to get finished. Um, I stitched this on a piece of 18 count Mystic Fabrics in a, a mystery die. It's beautiful and I'm happy I have some more of it. I just did the words because I want to do it as a small. Um, so forget me not my dear, my darling. And I just, I adore it. And it's got a little, that's a little comma there. Um, and I stitched it in two colors of DMC. I believe it's 169, yes, 169 and 924, I believe. No, I apologize, 930. Um, so I'm excited to get that little one uh, finished in some way, maybe into like a little pillow or like a neat little, little um, pin cushion. I haven't decided that yet, but I'm happy to had that one finished it was nice to work on that it's the lettering is really pretty and she has some other fun charts in her shop so please go check her out that's darling and whimsy designs um so let's see what else did I work on so over the weekend I did put in some more stitches into my acorn assortment this lives in a diddly daddle designs bag this is an in-hand stitcher size and this is um I'll use the bigger picture this is Acorn Assortment by Artith Designs. And it's um, her adaptation of like a 16th century tile design. And she includes this autumnal colorway and then one that's more monochrome. I am doing the autumnal. I am changing up some of the colors. I pulled some Victorian mottos and uh, Gentle Arts. Very pretty autumn palette. They're very similar to comparable to what she had called for. And this is on 18 count Snurt. From Mystic, Mystic Fabrics and um, I got in two more of the fan flowers because I think the last time I showed this which was in Friday's video last week I had one of the fan flowers so I have two more now and this is beautiful Amanda May has some very fun designs very whimsical designs and then she has some more sophisticated designs um, I love it absolutely adore it and this green is Victorian motto squash on the vine and I love how every now and again you, again you get kind of this golden tone. Um, so very pretty. And I love this. And I love Snurt. I'm ready for Misty to figure out how to bring it back. Because it's like the perfect grayish, gray beige. Um, and that red that I'm using is Victorian Motto Antique Cherry. And it's similar to 356 or 3380 combo. Kind of a combo of the two. So I did put some more into that. I won't let that languish too much longer. I did spin um, Plum Street Sampler Shepherd's Pie. This is Jack Sweet Shop. This was a market um, release this year. I am stitching this on 36 count vintage maple sugar linen from Lakeside Linens. And, oops, it's in, I don't wanna show you the back. But what I worked on is I finished out the sheep. The only thing that is not stitched is these three little dots. I'm gonna wait until I pull that color to stitch with. But I did fill in the color for the um, Ohio Stars, the eye, and then I outlined the green for this bottom grass bit, and then I did her little shoes, her little high heel boots, her little high heel shoes. So, um, huge sheep, so much fun. This is a beautiful piece of linen. Um, and I love it. And I am stitching this two over two on the 36 count. And I know that a lot of people like 36 is not, they say 36 is not my favorite because it's hard to know, do I do two, do I do one? I find the same thing with 18 count, but I just make it work. <laughs> um, this is a pouch I sewed with, um, this is Cafe Facet, or Facet fabric that I got at the quilt shop. And then it has a pretty batik on the inside. All right, so then I also spun this week. Project lives in this bag. This is a bag I sewed up using Helen D's tutorial, which I have linked pretty much every week that I've talked about it. I've linked it. And living inside this one, this was a, a mania start. This is Bent Creek's The Noah's Ark Mantle, and it's a three-part series. So this was part... This is part three, but part three is the one that has the whole chart, so that's why I have it in the front. Part one was the first section, and I believe it was originally sold as a kit. Um, I don't know if 
It is still sold exclusively as a kit, but as far as I know, it is not out of print. It's just not readily carried by LNS shops. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am stitching this in the called for DMC on a piece of, I believe, it's either 16 or 18 count Veteris from Mystic Fabrics. I finished out stitching the tree. I added in some of these light colored leaves. <clears throat> Excuse me. I stitched this alligator and the stripes of the second alligator. Um, the other alligator is in this darker green and then the alternating stripes are in that. And then I have live by. So it's live by faith, but live by was also in this green color. I think this is so adorable. I'm enjoying this stitch a lot. <clears throat> Excuse me. Beverage for today is raspberry hint. Now, if you have not tried hint water, it has just got the essence of fruit in it. It's not bubbly, so if you don't like sparkling, you might like it. I got like a assorted 12 pack at Target just to try, and I love them. They're really refreshing, and they just have like a hint of, of fruit in them. Um, it's not overwhelming. So it's a nice deviation, something different, um, because that is all I drink now is water. No tea, no coffee. I am going to try decaf coffee because I'm missing my morning coffee, but I am completely off caffeine, woohoo, and have been for a while and will continue to be. Um, I spun on my wheel this week to work on the project that lives in this bag. Actually, two projects live in here. The second project is a restart, though, so I feel like it could. Oh, this is a Garon tote bag, and I love this because it's like postage stamps from all the different states. And this is the Lone Star Stitchers by Twin Peaks Primitives. This is a chart they designed for our local stitching group, Stitching Texas. Um, I thought it was only for the retreat, but it has been uploaded, I believe, into the file section of our group, Stitching Texas 2020. Um, and so if you're a member of that group, you can get the chart, I believe. I will link the group below. Um, our, we just found out actually that because our retreat was supposed to be in April, got postponed to the beginning of June, got postponed to, the, to September, and now it's just been postponed to 2021, and we don't know dates yet. So I am still planning to go whenever it does end up happening because I'm so excited about it, and I know how hard my friend Tina has worked on it. And um, so, yeah, this is on 16 count Picture This Plus in Nessie, which is a light blue. This was a color from 2019's market. And I um, put in all of the blue like cones of the flowers and I am stitching this. I've kind of modified it just slightly. Um, I'm using some color and cotton and some leak dye works. I'm kind of using it. So my border was in um, color and cotton bumblebee. My red I'm using is gentle arts buckeye scarlet. My blue is Weeks Dye Works Americana, which is like a really pretty Royal Cadet blue. And then the white-ish that I'm using is Gentle Arts Picket Fence. So that it, those are the colors I'm using in case you are considering stitching this or you go and join the group and you get it and you wanna stitch it. Um, those are the colors I'm using. It calls for a more brown golden as the border. I chose to go with yellow, like the Yellow Rose of Texas. This is a fun little stitch. I was happy it got spun. That was the fun one to work on. All right. And then the next one I'm going to show before I show the one I worked on a lot over the course of this week, and I'm selling it, um, lives in this So Much to Love bag. This is, uh, it's a Paris themed bag. And living in here is the project that I chose, the wheel chose as my 100 stitch project. So I had started with kind of the thought process behind a 30 minute daily stitch. The thing is, I like to see a bit of, bit more progress than I can get in 30 minutes. So I kind of set about to say, okay, I'm gonna do 100 stitches at least each weekday on this project. Um, 
This one I did not stitch on yesterday, so it only has four days progress. However, each day I did, so one day I did 172, one I did 179, one I did 193, and one I did 204. So in my opinion, I've kind of averaged out to over 100 each day. I may see if I can get some in it tonight, or I might pull it out this weekend, but I also had to frog. So, anywho. Um, any, let's get back to the project. So, living in here is Ink Circles Rosetta, and I know a lot of you were really excited on the last video that this was going to get to come out and be stitched on. Um, I adore this project. Um, it is actually charted to stitch completely in Gloriana Cranberry Silk which I think would be insanely gorgeous. I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you. Tracy is a, is a designing genius. I have actually joined her Patreon. Um, Patreon is a way that you can become a patron of someone and usually it's a financial support to them. It's a minimal cost each month and there's some sort of, um, what do you call it? Um, incentive to participate. So in hers, you get a chart each month um, that's exclusive. Um, she also does a mandala coloring page. A lot of hers, I was not aware of this until I joined and was kind of looking and reading her story and things that were on her feed. A lot of her mandalas and things that she draw, she draws them with pencil first, which I think is amazing. She's a true artist. Um, but the thing that I love about this is every circle motif is different. Every center medallion is different. Every edge medallion is different. So I have designed very few charts. This one, this one, and then Squirrely Welcome. I know how long those took me to design. I cannot imagine how long this took to design. 12 I mean, these are, this is large. This is a large project. This is 261 by 197. I love it. I adore this project. I am so sad that I put it away for so long, but now it's back out and it's not going to stay languishing as long. It's a long-term project. Let's, let's not put any like, oh, it's, it's little. No, it's big and it's a long-term project. Um, I am actually stitching this in a rainbow of Gentle Arts threads. I literally went to the floss wall at my LNS, which is the Stitch Niche in um, Arlington, Texas, and pulled all the colors I loved on the wall. And then I was like, okay, I need to get to 12 plus one for a border. So I did that. Um, I actually have this on a floss ring, and then my floss drop is actually a key ring from the St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City. We went there over Christmas break, and I, this reminds me of rose windows. Our church has a beautiful rose window as well. Um, so all of my borders are in Gentle Arts Cinders, which is just the coolest color. Um, I love it. And then, and I stitched on this for Carla Rolodex Stitch's birthday. She said stitch on something that reminds you of me or, you know, is subvers subversive or snarky or like there was different Things. Well, guess what? Cinders reminds me of her because Cinders is life. She and I both agree on that fact and I actually sent her some. Um, so I stitched on this for her birthday so. Um, But the way that I'm doing this is in kind of a rainbow. So you can kind of see just these beautiful colors. So we've got pink azalea. I haven't gotten to any of these. These are going to be towards the end. Geranium. Pomegranate. Coral reef. Bittersweet, butter crunch, gold leaf, corn husk, which my corn husk is really lime, lime like, island blue, cucumber, which is, I got to this this time, dragonfly, I've already finished stitching, which is a really cool turquoise and brown, like ochre brown, and then uh, verdigris, which was the first motif I did, and then, like I said, cinders. So I am working in um, kind of a rainbow of colors. And I think that that's what makes this project so fun to me and not at all like a trudging through is that each time I hit a new motif, 
it's a new color, which is really cool to see how that plays out. Now the borders being cinders, I kind of make myself do a little bit of border and then work on a medallion. A little bit of border, work on a medallion. Because if I save the borders till the end, the borders wouldn't get done, I'm being honest. So I put in quite a substantial amount of work into this. This is on a 20 count opalescent Ada in Snurt from Mystic Fabrics. So I already had this medallion and the around the around the way parts. I had to frog out some of this one down here because it wasn't going to reach. I had put some stitches in the wrong spot. So this one is finished. I love how this looks on camera. And I also, I think this was done. Yeah. And then I came over and did some here. I did this whole top medallion. I did some down here. And then I started, let me fold it a little bit. I started this one in the cucumber. I just love it. I love the little delicate stitches that you do with the one strand on 20 count. Now, one thing that those of you who have been with me for a while and remember this project, I actually started this with two strands and did all of this and did the vast majority. I actually think I did the whole medallion. Oh no, I did almost the whole medallion over two. Like I literally switched it just right here. And you can kind of tell the difference. Okay, you can really tell the difference, but I don't care. Um, I'm not going back and fixing. So that is where I got to this week. I'm really proud of my progress. I did about 800 stitches, I think, on this. Um, and as you can see, I still have my threads back here hanging. Because um, I always usually have a piece of cinders or a strand of cinders hanging out waiting until the next the next go round. So yes, I loved working on this this week. I loved it. I loved it. All right. And then the last project I'm going to show is in a bag that I got. Mandy sent this to me. This is my awesome quilted joy bag. I have another one that is holding nativity row. So you'll be seeing that one hopefully soon. And this one is holding chart by Teresa Kogut. This is United We Stand. And I am using this, and I neglected to mention last week, and Becca mentioned in the comments, and I was like, duh, it was even in my notes. Um, I am participating in a stitch along on this, a sal, with Becca Sambri Stitches, Stitching with the Sisterlies is kind of the, they're the hosts. Um, and the hashtag for that, there's a lot of people participating in it, so they're just the host. Um, the hashtag is hashtag SWTS, Stitching with the Sisterlies United. I also chose um, EJ of the Sunshine Stitchers is doing a sal that started today. I don't think there's an ending point to it, um, but it's hashtag representation. I want to make sure I say it correctly. Representation matters sal and diversity and inclusion sal. Um, she is EJ Creates on Instagram. Um, I will link her Instagram below. And you can kind of see she's got her graphic about it and what what kind of the parameters for the sow are. But she wanted to see diversity in stitching. So a person of color, um, even a color conversion was perfectly fine. And I adore this chart. And so, of course, I pulled it out to stitch on it. Um, I am stitching this on a 27 count Linda from B Stitch Me Fabrics in Through the Stones. It's still on my Q-snap, so I'm gonna pull it off real quick. And I'm stitching this two over two on 27 count. So it's more like 13 and a half count. So it's big. Um, I post, when I posted the very first picture, um, my friend Kathy goes, how big is that? And I was like, okay, <laughs> it's two over two on 27. It's not this big, but it is pretty, it's big for me, but I adore it. Oh my gosh, I adore it. I have, gotten quite a bit of progress on this. I'm very actually proud of it. And I will say I've been working on her face and her hair today. It's not finished. So her face looks wonky, but it that's my goal for tonight is to finish off her face. Um so last you saw this, I had the arms and the flag. So I had said I wanted to put in United We Stand, so I got that in. Um I stitched this other sweet little girl's stripe top and I put in the stripe here. I outlined this whole skirt. Look at that skirt. Diva is rocking a huge skirt. So is the other girl. They are both divas in giant ball skirts. And I am a, I'm here for it. 
And then I started working on her precious face and these adorable eyes and this little prim little, little mouth. And then I'm working on her hairline. So my goal today would be to get her face finished. I want to stitch her hands while I have this color out. This is DMC 840 is what I'm using. Um, it wasn't the called for. The called for I didn't have. Um, the called for was 611. But I love this little car caramely, um, toasty brown color. And then I'm going to start working on her precious little bun. Um, so yeah, I just adore this piece. Oh, it's so good. Um, and it's such, I love this Linda. Oh my gosh. I'm adoring the Linda as well. So if you have not tried Linda, it's awesome. I'm actually, I'm going to have an, a start at some point, not, not today, not this week. Um, and here is my palette of colors. It's kind of ratty. It's, I'm, I haven't reached Nicole of Nicole's needlework level of combing the flosses. Um, but I did ramp up my reds. I talked about this last week. Um, hers was a little more rusty. I ramped them up a bit. And then my blues, I think, were the called for. And then I didn't have the, I ramped up my yellow a little bit. Um, so, yeah. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. So, I am going to keep this one separate because I'm going to work on that. All right. So, that is all that I stitched on. And then you pick up. So let's talk a little bit of plans. So I know for a fact I have got to work on the Linens and Threads Mystery Sampler. I still have not even, I've started May, scotch of May, not very much. I haven't, I obviously haven't started June and so I've got to, I've got to kick myself in the rear and get that one progressing. And then I need to work on June square dance. Now, square dances, they're the little smalls from Heart and Hand. They don't take me very long. They take me like two to three little stitching sessions. But I do need to pull my colors, my flosses for those, for that one, for June. Um, so those are on the agenda at some point before hopefully July 1st. I do not think I will get Mystery Sampler both May and June completed before July 1st. I don't think so. Um, I did spin and it was supposed to get worked on today, but we had some other stuff going on and I didn't get to it. Um, but I am going to, at some point this weekend, work a little bit in Elizabeth Cooper. This is from Sassafras Samplers. This is the, um, I call it the Jesus Wept. And this was one that they put out. This was their Be Well in Stitch. Um, and I did a conversion on this. I'll just show you what I have. Um, this is on 28 count linen, I believe in Veteris from Mystic Fabrics. And I have almost the one color of the border. It's kind of hard to see and it's really wrinkly. I have a little bit more and then I've got the alternating border. And then literally the whole rest of the project is over one. Yeah. There's two versions of this chart. I don't know if it's still on their website. I will link it below um, if it's still a freebie on their website. There are two versions of this chart. There is over two, all of it over two, which makes it really big. And then there's the border over two and all the middle over one. That's what I chose to do. And then I did ramp up my colors a little bit to give them a little bit more depth. So, yep, I would like to put a little bit more into this one. This weekend, and this one lives in a so much to love big bottom bag that I found on Stash on Load. All right, so what we what I need to do now, I need to find my phone, is spin for my hundred stitch project for next week. So let's see what we get. So I have my all whip wheel, and let's see what we get. If it's a holiday project, I'm not going to choose it. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. Cherish All Living Things, that was a Mania start. That is a Lizzie Kate chart. And that is a good one to have for 100 stitch. Awesome. Okay, so, and just for fun, just to spin again, let's spin for my Saturday project, or Saturday, Sunday, at some point project. So let's see. Again, anything holiday, I'm going to re-spin. No, 
I'm not gonna work on USA map. <laughs> Tell the wheel, no wheel. Chicken Joy, that's Christmas. Those are gonna get worked on in July. Ooh, Downton Abbey. Okay, cool. I'll put some time into Downton Abbey. I'll keep working on building some walls of the Abbey. All right, so I think let's get to stash and then we'll do some life update. So here's your next musical interlude. It's joy filled stashy stash time. Joy filled stashy stash time. All right, I'm gonna have to put this over. Let's start with some non-stitching related, but something really positive and cool that I found. Anybody ever get sucked into Facebook ads? Facebook ads are the new infomercials. That's, that's my theory. Well, you know, occasionally a good Facebook ad comes along. A non-scammy Facebook ad, because that is the one thing that I have heard from some of my friends. That they're like, oh, it seemed too good to be true. It probably is. That's one thing I learned. And um, sometimes you don't even get what you order. But what I did was I was like, oh, those are really neat. Let me go to their website. And I went to their reputable website and checked out reviews and all of that. So um, they come in this really cute little pouch. You may have noticed I'm actually wearing one. So it's called a Zox, and it is a stretchy elastic bracelet. They come each individually wrapped in these like little pouches, zip pouches. The unique thing about them is, is they have different messages or themes. So the one that I'm wearing today has this beautiful, and these are created by artists. Um, the artists create the designs, and then they come up with the corresponding thought or intention or motivation and this one says today I will not worry and it comes with a numbered they are numbered numbered card and it comes like on the card in the little package like this and it says today I will not worry and on the back it has like a this one has a mantra and it says take a deep breath and rest your tired mind relax the unknown may seem scary now, but take a moment to recognize how much you've been through already. You're bigger than this. You're strong enough to handle it all. Have faith, my dear. Everything will be all right. So, kind of my intention when I put this on this morning was I read that. I did, I took a deep breath. I rested my mind for a minute. Um, and then I carried this in my pocket of my skirt all day today. Um, and I would have just put it in my purse had I not have my skirt on. So there was a code that I used. I don't know if it's still applicable. I will link below if, if it is. Um, and it was if you bought three and they're not expensive. I think they were nine dollars maybe or something like that. Nine or ten dollars each. Um, if you buy, excuse my dog. Sometimes I swear my dog is part cat. He hacks up hairballs. Not really but it sounds like it. Um, tangent. Uh, Choo choo, my train of thought just left. If you bought three or more, you got 30% off. So that was kind of a unique deal. And I ended up buying three for myself and then I bought one for Joy Filled Little One and it's um, You Are My Sunshine. And so the little the little band has, um, and they have kid sizes and then they have small, medium, large. I bought medium, I bought her, I think I bought her the kid size. Or I might've bought her a small because I wasn't sure. Anyway. Um, I bought the medium and they said that like 95% of the people who purchase from them are a medium, but they give you a wrist measurement and all of that. Um, I probably could have technically done a small. The medium's a little big on me. Um, I have, I have dainty, delicate wrists. The rest of me, not dainty, not delicate. More bull in a china shop. Um, anyway, hers has, is turquoise and has a little sunshine on it. And then when you flip it over, it says, you are my sunshine. And then the card says, you are my sunshine. And on the back, my only sunshine. I used to sing that to her all the time. So the other one that I got is this really pretty marble one. And the, the theme on this one is perfectly imperfect. And it says, imperfection equals individual, individual, <laughs> words, imperfection equals individuality equals perfection. So perfectly imperfect. And then obviously on the inside it says perfectly imperfect and has the really pretty stuff as well. Pretty designs. 
And then the last one I got, I love this one. It's a fun floral pattern. You're going to be okay. And it says, this right here is just a brush stroke. I've, so this right here is a brush stroke. I've seen the finished painting, my dear. It's beautiful. And then it says, you're going to be okay. So they've got all kinds. They've got, they have some pride ones right now. They have um, empowering ones. They have, they have these that are more for mindfulness and intentional thought. Um, they've got wider ones. They've got this size. And then there's like a wider one. I did not get any of those. Anyway, just something cool that I found that has brought some un unique intentionality and purpose for me. I'm not affiliated with them. I just something cool I thought I'd share with you. All right, so I did get a couple, two items from Stash Unload. Oh no, I, I'm sorry. I get a few items from Stash Unload. Um, this seller had these charts um, really well priced. Um, and I had not seen this one. I thought this was cute. Trail Creek Farm, it says, you're very sweet. My daughter loves strawberries. I thought this would be a fun little stitch or even one that maybe soon she would like to stitch. Um, this one, bless our family. I definitely want to work on this one soon and hang this up like in our front entry hall. And then this one is Sweet Nothings by JBW Designs. Um, it's really kind of hard to see, but it's got these precious little houses. It says, welcome in the morning. Welcome in the morning. Welcome in the middle. And then around the edge it says, peace be to this home and all who dwell within. And I think that's really sweet. I will probably, and that's not focusing very well, but I will probably change up the um, colors on it. And then um, from a different seller, I got this Bent Creek. It's like in an envelope. This is old school Bent Creek, like with a real photo. And this is Fox Hollow, which I think is really cute. And it says, a wonderful little town full of friends, love, and memories, Fox Hollow. It's got a little fox up there. Kind of reminds me of... Um, Pam and Steph in their story of the Red Fox family. I just think that's really cute. No plans on when that's going to get stitched. And then this was actually, this is a dying to stitch uh, quaint country ladies kit club that this uh, person was selling. And this is a Pineberry Lane um, Christmas time sewing roll. And I knew I had to have it because it has St. Lucia, Lucia or Lucia um, which when, okay, so backstory in fourth grade at our school, we did Christmas around the world. And so we each were given a country and then we researched it and then we came dressed up. We served food that was similar to that country and mine was Sweden. And St. Lucia is very popular in Sweden. She wears the white dress with the red sash and she has a like a garland with candles on her head. And so I had like a wreath with candles on my head, not real candles candles on my head and I had the white gown with the red sash and so I knew I had to have this and I will stitch this I don't this might be above my sewing skill level but we'll see and it comes with all of the it actually she left her receipt in here so I'm gonna cover that up but it comes with the finishing fabrics the felt it comes with a needle and the fabric and all the flosses and everything so I just think that's so pretty. I don't know if I'll make it into the sewing roll, but I know that I want to stitch that for sure. I had to have that. Had to. Because I was like, I'm strolling down memory lane in the Stash on Live group. All right, let's do some floss and then we'll do something else. Okay, so I got my nest egg from 3 Owl Threads. Uh, Trish at 3 Owl Threads runs a nest egg. And what it is is you buy in to her, she has all kinds of flosses. Um, she has all the fancies, so she has classic color works, weeks dye works, gentle art, she has dinky dyes, she has thread works, krynik, sulky, like pretty much anything you would want she has. And eat, you purchase 10 skeins each month and they come alphabetically, which is awesome. I am in three of them right now. I am in Classic Color Works, Gentle Arts, and Weeks Dye Works. Starting next month, I will only be getting Classic Color Works and Gentle Arts because I am running out of storage space. And those are the ones that I tend to pull the most from. 
Um, so by Classic Color Works this month, we are kind of in the B's. I'm looking to see if we had any. No, they're all in the B's. So we've got Blue Beatrice, Blue Beadboard, Blooming Crocus, and Blue Moon. Lots of blues this month. Barrel Cactus and Blueberry Tart. Bandana and Betty Bluebell. More blues. And then Bejeweled and Brown Sugar. And Bejeweled is awesomely variegated. So that was Classic Color Works. Let's take these back in here. So I will put these in my spreadsheet and then go put them in their respective drawers. And then for Weeks Dye Works, we are in the S's. So we've got Snowflake and Strawberry Fields, which I have a ton of Strawberry Fields because that's in my linens and threads. Sweetheart Rose and Swamp Water. Sweet Pea and Sunset. Sugar Plum and Tatonka. Tatonka? Tatanka? Thyme and Thistle. And I will say a lot of these are super variegated. Um, and I think that that's why I gravitate more towards the Gentle Arts and towards um, for this purpose where you're getting them alphabetically. Um, I think that's why I gravitate more towards the Gentle Arts and the Classic Color Works is there are some more highly variegated but the vast majority are more mildly variegated. Um, I actually got two months worth of my Gentle Arts because they were shut down. So I got May, April and May. Is this April and May? Or May and June? Mm. It's two months worth. I think it was May and June. Um, and so we're kind of in the C's and D's. I think right now. So you've got Cherry Bark and Chives. Cherry Bark and Chives. Daisy and Deep Forest. Deep Sea and Dried Thyme. Driftwood and Dungarees. Indive, oh, Indive's in so many charts. And es ex Espresso Bean. Pretty. And then my other set that I got, I don't know which, which was which doesn't really matter. Um, this was the week of flosses because I got my color in cotton too, so I'm going to share that in just a second. Um, this one has Cucumber and Crystal Lake. Oops, sorry. Cucumber and Crystal Lake. Cranberry and Cotton Candy. And Cotton Candy is the faintest pink, but it's totally washing out, but it's got the faintest pink. Country Redwood and Corn Husk. Current and Banker's Gray. So there is some filling in because Banker's Gray was skipped. Amethyst and Sweet Pea. So Sweet Pea was skipped because it was out of stock at that point. So as far as I know, we are back on normal scheduling going forward. All right, so color and cotton. Now, color and cotton, from, I got an email about Fabric Club and Floss Club that they are skipping June because they, are, they have not received supplies in order to fulfill everything and then feel confident to ship July as quickly as possible or as much on schedule as possible. So they're skipping June altogether. There's no billing, none of that. It doesn't affect your subscription terms or if you have a gift or... A prepaid you don't lose a month and then July will hopefully pick back up hopefully so I get from them the all colors and I get ten of them and this is maze this is maze floss club so we've got pine needles and mistletoe and hers are eight yards maple syrup and winter sea icy gray And then we've got in this pack 
Lemon Latte and Poseidon. Wisteria and Barn Red. I love her flosses. And Peach Rose. So, um, I get the all colors. I know that they do a prim, which is cool. Um, and then they do a brights. But I like the all colors because then I kind of get a mix. Um, I'm keeping out two of them. No, I'm not. Keeping out one of them because it will come into play in a moment when I talk to you about uh, an, a chart that I got. Okay. Let me put that over there. All right. So then I got my fabric of the month from um, Be Stitch Me. I am part of her fabric of the month. And I get 18 count fat quarter. And I get the neutral colorway. And everybody was raving about the fabric this month. Oh my goodness, it's so good. And I didn't know if they were talking about color or neutral. But I'm going to tell you, I will rave about the neutral. Because it's beautiful. It's called Boot Camp. And it is a light green gray. It's not reading very well. That's pretty. That's a better assessment of it. And so, really pretty. And then a couple of weeks ago, no... I think I got this like on Saturday. So I think it was the Friday before that. I participated in Friday Night Fight Night. I don't know if there's one tonight. And I got another 27 count. This is an unnamed fat quarter. And it's this really pretty light purple. And it's got some neat modeling in it. So I don't know what it's for, but it was pretty. And I wanted to participate. So. I don't know if I will tonight. If there is one, I might. I'll see what there is. Okay, so then I placed an order with Miss Teresa Coquit. I am obsessed with all her things. And I got, um, actually I placed two orders. I'm trying to think. When I bought United We Stand, it's a digital chart, I purchased a, a shipped item. So then the shipped item came. Then I placed an order for another shipped item and bought two digital, digital charts. So she has a whole series of charts. I think it's 15 of them that right now she's um, selling for $10 a piece. And each of them benefits a, a different brick and mortar store. Um, United We Stand benefits one. Um, she believes she could, so she did, is another one. I'm obsessed with all of these, but I think I might be done unless she releases some more. But I think this one's adorable. This is Girl Boss. Um, I don't know if I'm going to stitch it to say girl boss. I'm thinking of like something else, like you go girl kind of a thing. Um, and then my printer still is being a jerk. So please excuse the wonky colors. And then I had to have this one, find joy in the garden. I think that's so cute. I love it. Now I might change it to find joy in the journey. I might. We'll see. So anyway, I got those. These are just the printouts of the front covers so I could show you because they're so cute. The one thing that I got that I have been wanting to order and I finally said, you know what? You're doing this for you. And I ordered them are the Angel Kindness cards. Um, those of you that watch Jan Hicks Creates, she reads one of these each week. Um, we're going to have one of these in our house each week. And I will be more than happy to share them with you on here. I don't want to take away from Jan's thing um but I wanted to show you the very the the one that I had on top in my box so the angel kindness cards they're beautifully printed on this you know good glossy cardstock um they're based on the artwork of Teresa Kogut so it's angel kindness cards bring you the blessings and inspiration of 52 beautiful angels painted by the artist Teresa Kogut each angel offers a message of spiritual encouragement and hopes to help lift you during times of doubt. After you have received the angel's help, you might consider passing the angel kindness card along to someone else who may also need some encouragement. You can change your whole world with a simple gesture of kindness. And it, you can, it's got some information about her shop. But the one that was on top of my box, or it may not have been on top, but I was flipping through and I stopped upon Pray which I'm stitching this piece. Um, mine, though, does not have this part up here, which is Pray Without Ceasing, 1 Thessalonians 5.17. And on the back, it says, Your life is a reflection of your thoughts and feelings. Every day, choose joy, gratitude, 
harmony and love. So I love my prey piece even more now that I've seen the original artwork and the beautiful intentional thoughts on the back and the fact that it includes joy joy so hold on just all righty so I um needed to answer that phone call because it was joy filled little one so anyway angel kindness cards um 52 beautiful cards with different sentiments all of her amazing artwork um you can kind of see these are some of the other ones love it so I went ahead and I, I splurged a bit on those for myself. Um, and the other thing that I got, um, and this was something that came out today, and you may have seen it if you are part of any of the Facebook groups or anywhere on Instagram. Um, I shared it with our Zoom group. It is um, a long dog chart, long dog samplers, that they are letting you download for one week for free started today it goes through the 26th I don't remember what time on the 26th but I know that so many people tried to access it today at various times it crashed her site so it is beautiful it is huge it is epic and I cannot wait to start it <laughs> anyway because that's exactly what I need in my life is another long dog but I have been wanting a monochrome long dog, and this takes the cake. So um, she actually was going to release this next year in 2021. There's a whole story behind it. Um, I think she said for her 25th anniversary. But she felt like, and what's interesting is she had designed this and named it this name. And she said, nope, I got to release it now. And for a week, it's going to be free. It's going to be free to download. And then she asked that, you know, people obviously don't share the chart, but link back to her website. And then after the week, after the 26th, it will go up for sale as any normal chart in her shop. So she has named this Pandemic, and it is amazing. Amazing. I cannot wait. Um, so there's birds. There's deer. There's like ducks, there's like cranberries, there's, oh my gosh, fan flowers or croissant flowers as I sometimes call them. There's little people, there's tiny people. I am obsessed with this right here, this whole motif right here. I will not be putting 2020 because there's no way this is getting done in 2020. I will, if I get to this point, I will put 20 and leave the other one until we get to that point. Um, this is massive. It's 365 by 429. This will not fit on a fat quarter of 18 count. This will not fit on a fat quarter of 40 count or 20 count. So what I pulled, because I would love to start this. I had a piece of 27 count from Bee Stitch Me and it's in Outback Jack. And it's this really pretty beige, but it's got kind of a dusty rose brown undertone now you may say well that didn't go fit on that piece well it is if I stitch it over one so that is what I'm going to do I'm going now the only other piece of fabric I have that it would fit on is I have that huge piece that half yard of 18 count caraway from color and cotton but that is consider the lilies so I have to decide if I want to snag that from consider the lilies and use it for this or if I want to do the 27 count. I think I'm willing to give the 27 count over one a shot. I've done 25 count over one. I've done 32 count over one on um, Fairy Bowl Sampler for the cartouche in the middle. So I think this 27 is going to work out. And this is really pretty. So here's where y'all come into play. I went through my flosses today and I figured out, one, did I have enough of anything? I was also trying to do a lot of mental math because it tells you how much you need for 18 count with one strand. And I was like, but it doesn't say 27 count with one strand. So I'm guesstimating. I'm basing it on the 18 count over one. So I know I won't need quite that much. And it says you need 157 meters. So then I was like, okay, well, is that divided by six strands? And then also divided by the eight yards. 
because then that would be 157 divided by 48 gives you roughly three and some change meters. I mean, three and some change skeins. So I don't know. <laughs> I, I have some ideas of some colors I am considering on Outback Jack. So let me show them to you. So we've got Color and Cotton Boysenberry. I have two of these. But it was available on the site and I ordered some more. So I went ahead and did that. So we've got boysenberry. So that's one choice. And it's kind of pinks and purples and magentas. So that's a choice. I kind of like it. Then we've got this just came. And I ordered some more of this. This is Poseidon. So that's that tealy blue. I did order some more of this because it is available on the site right now. Right now. I don't know about later. Okay, then I've got, I already have four skeins of this. This is sapphire. Color and cotton is going to be the jam on this. That's sapphire. I think that is gorgeous. But I love the other ones too. And then I've got my old standby. It's not that old though. But it's my new favorite black or black gray, which is typewriter. So what do we think? Typewriter. Oops. Sapphire. Poseidon or boysenberry and mind you I've ordered some of all of them so boysenberry Poseidon Poseidon's adventure I'm gonna try to do this we'll see if it works sapphire or typewriter what do we think? Boysenberry, Poseidon, Sapphire, or Typewriter? Weigh in your opinion in the comment box below. Please help a gal out. Obviously, um, on these that I don't have enough of them, I honestly think I probably have enough of both Typewriter or Sapphire. Because I have, and if you're if you're more mathematically inclined in this respect, I have four of these. They're eight yards each. So that's 32 yards total times six. That's a lot of floss. Okay? Same with the typewriter. Now, boysenberry, I have two. Here's my concern. These are old tag. Is new tag going to be the same? Or does it even really matter with monochrome? Now, Poseidon is brand new, and what I get is going to be the same dye lot, I would assume. And so, that's a, that's an option. So, yeah. Weigh in. Because I can't keep all these flosses, I mean, I could theoretically, in here. But clearly, if it's one of the ones I think I have enough of, I could start soon. Or then later. That's exactly what I need. Is a new start. I need a new start like I need a hole in the head. Okay. That's all she wrote about stitching. So, if you are not interested in life update, totally get it. That's why I've started doing it at the end because I know not everybody is interested in hearing about life update. So, if you are done with me for this week, I want to wish you a wonderful week ahead, a great stitchy weekend, a great weekend just in general. Hopefully it is nice, pleasant weather where you are. We are hot as all get out, um, but we've, that's just summer in Texas. And we haven't hit 100 very often, I don't think. So, but that's coming. I know that's coming. So anyway, if you're heading out, okay, bye. If you're sticking around, here's some life update. So this week was, like I said, there was some stitching going on. Not a lot of diamond painting. Lots of doctor type appointments. Um, <clears throat> I mentioned in the last video and several of you have commented that like, yes, you do the very same thing. You schedule all of the like a checkup and this and that and the other all in the summer. So I had, you know, last week I had an appointment on that Friday with my primary care physician for my yearly physical. I had my three-month follow-up with the endocrinologist on Tuesday. I had little one's six-month dentist appointment on Thursday. And then on today, I had my very first official 
counseling appointment, which went wonderfully, I will say. It went fantastic. I love her already, and she is so knowledgeable, and I think it's going to be amazing. And I'm going to be seeing her every week for a bit. Um, in fact, I will see her again this coming Wednesday. But lab works, for those of you that were like, hope your labs come back, they all came back actually really well. Um, my cholesterol is completely under control, which is fantastic. My um, All my diabetes numbers are all coming back good. Um, the only thing was liver, but I've known about that. So when I went to the endocrinologist, I talked to her. She said, you know what? Let's add in this extra little medication that will help with that. So that's on its way from the mail order pharmacy. And we'll see how that goes. And I see her again. I see her every three months. Um, so that was great. That was great news. Um, I'm feeling fantastic. Um, still waking up with a little bit of that anxiety first thing in the morning, but we've had more going on. And so I think that that has given me something to drive me into the day, which is fantastic. Um, our new thing is when Joyfield Little One wakes up, she calls me. She still doesn't leave her room without like, without me coming in there. Um, we started that when she was a little bitty. We said, okay, you cannot leave your room because we didn't want her wandering the house. Um, <clears throat> and I know some people are totally cool with that or like their kid getting up. When she was little, I didn't want that to be the case because she's in kind of like a little nook and cranny, far, kind of far away from our master bedroom. And, um, but now she's eight. And I've even said, hey, if you want to get up, you can get up, you can go turn on a cartoon, you can, like, whatever. Nope. Mommy, 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 mommy. And so I go in there, and now her new thing is she loves to come and lay in the bed and turn on a cartoon in the morning. Turn on, it's been, this week it's been like Miles from Tomorrowland from Disney. Um... She's revisiting lots of her younger day cartoons. And um, so that's been kind of nice to like kind of just chill in the morning and have lounge time with her. And then, um, so looking ahead, this next week is, there's not as much going on. Um, I do have, I don't really have anything going on. She has swim. She has swim lessons um, all week next week, which is great. Still no swim plugs. And I called today and they said, wow, it's been a long time. And I said, you're telling me. And um, so I basically said, we're going to give it one more week and then we may just cancel them. Because at this point, I really don't want to pay out of pocket what they cost when the summer's nearly over. And the ones that I've purchased on Amazon are actually working fairly well. So she did have an ear infection, but she kind of gets one of those. And then it's like, she gets over it and then she's fine the whole rest of the summer. Um, we've officially decided we are not taking any kind of traveling this summer. Um, our numbers continue to rise here. I know that a lot of people don't like to hear about COVID, but here in Texas, our numbers continue to rise. Um, they are starting to discuss what school's going to look like in the fall. Um, our local independent school district, which is the public school, um, Fourth ISD has put out that they are going to allow families starting July 1st to decide if they will be in person or virtual, which I think is great. What I don't think is fantastic is that the teachers found out via a Facebook post. They were not notified. And as a teacher myself, that broke my heart because that shows that you're you're not fully invested in your teachers and their livelihood and their well-being. And of course, it brought up lots of questions of what's that going to mean for me? Am I going to be doing both? Am I going to be doing one? What, you know, things that are unnecessary at this point. And I have a lot of friends that they're like, I don't know which one to choose because they've not given me all the information. And I was like, I'm so sorry. Um, we are looking at coming back at our school um, in person. We have very low class sizes. Last year, Joyfield Little One in second grade had 12 kids in her class, and that's pretty typical. Um, we've actually, in the grades that ha were pushing 15 or 16, um, they've hired another teacher. So they're going to divide them up even more. So we're trying to keep with that 12 to 13 kids per class. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, 
which she she even today I'm ready to go back to school and I said I know I am too I said but we don't go to school in June and July ever so you've got camps to look forward to if those are still gonna happen and then school will start in August and that is she does have um, a couple of day camps coming up at our school um, in the next like I think the 29th is one of her camps and then she's got some in July I haven't decided what of that she's gonna go to we'll see um, we're doing lots of swimming, which is awesome. I'm enjoying it. They do a 10 minute break at the end of every hour. We are on a, we are still doing reservations. We get a three hour time block and we like the 10 o'clock to one o'clock time period. And um, at the end of each hour within that time, they have a 10 minute adult only in the pool. It's kind of to encourage kids to go and like use the bathroom or get out and take a break for a minute give the lifeguards a break for a minute from watching all the squirrely children in the pool. Um, but I take that as an opportunity to do some laps in the pool, which has been great. Um, I love low impact, um, like that the water gives you. And so it's awesome to be able to sneak in that little 10 minutes. That's actually like 20 minutes by the time all is said and done of lap swimming. So that's nice. Um, but yeah, we're not we're not traveling anywhere, which is weird because we always take a summer vacation. We did not do one last year. We ended up taking our trip at Christmas time, which is kind of I guess fine because we've you know we're still within six months of our last trip. But that's kind of one of the things that we always have done as a family is take some kind of vacation somewhere. Um, so that's kind of a bummer, but it's it's okay. We this is this is just for now. We don't we're hopeful that maybe we can travel again. Um, next summer we'll see it may be another summer before we can um, little one keeps asking when we can go back to Great Wolf um, Great Wolf is open here they are limiting the number of people but I don't know even what that limiting is looking like because as of right now like restaurants can open at 75% capacity so that's practically full um, so I don't know what that looks like and she asked her daddy and he said, when your mommy is comfortable with it, we will figure that out. And I don't know that I'm ready to be comfortable with that yet. Now granted, there's enough chlorine in that space to burn your eyeballs out of your head, let alone kill every virus in the world. Um, so I mean, that is something we could consider, but it's middle of the week would be when we would want to go, not on a weekend. And husband's back at work full time right now. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's gonna happen or not. So right now we're just enjoying doing stuff around. We, um, we got our new furniture in the living room area and our family room area. And <laughs> we power, like not power washed. We got one of those rug doctor things. And that was pretty awesome. That was not this the past weekend though. Um, and we've just, I've just been working on like going through little one's closet, um, getting rid of things that don't fit anymore. Like just all those things that just are by the, you know, we don't have time for. This next week, I really want to work on sewing stuff, get my project bags finished up that I already have cut out. Um, and I'd love to say that I'd like some finishing to happen, but I don't think that's going to happen. I'm just not in the right mindset right now. I'm not feeling, I'm not feeling creative in that respect to get some finishing done. Um, the other thing that we've been doing a lot in our house is Animal Crossing. So yeah, um, we all like Animal Crossing. We all have our islands. If you are familiar with Animal Crossing, I will tell you that my island is Joyful Island. <laughs> Shocking! And um, I, this past week, acquired my basement. So my house is fully expanded, which is awesome. And, um, I'm trying to determine if I will inevitably pay off that $2.4 million million bell, excuse me, bells are the dollar, the currency of the islands. Um, or if I'm just going to be like, nope, no incentive to. Um, so yeah, little one likes to play it. She is big on dressing her character and crafting things and decorating the walls and floors of her room and building pathway, pathways and things like that. Um, husband loves the fishing of it, and so he loves to fish when he's on. 
Um, I love visiting Mystery Islands and um, kind of just the gameplay of it. Yeah. So anyway, that's a little bit of all of that. Um, I really think that's about it for this week. Um, more stitching to come. Um, I'm trying to get better about posting on Instagram, but I'm just not great. You know, half the time I remember, I'm like, oh, I forgot to take a picture of that. Oh, do I want to go dig back out that project bag? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Um, so yeah, I hope everybody has a fantastic week. I hope you have um, some fun stitching time. Maybe you found some new projects to work on. Maybe you're participating in some of these stitch alongs. Um, whatever is going to bring you joy during this time, please do it. Do what makes you happy. If you love stitching on big count fabrics, not big count. If you like stitching on Ada, stitch on Ada. If you like stitching on linen, stitch on linen. If you like stitching in all DMC, stitch in all DMC. If you like converting everything, convert everything. Like, you do you. Because that's what this is all about. This hobby is, for me, an escape. A creative escape. And I adore it. And I'm not stopping anytime soon. And Joyfield Little One has decided she wants to go through my pattern binders and find her next project. I'm not sure how I feel about that. We'll see. <laughs> anyway, so with that, I think I'm going to bid you farewell for this week. I am probably uploading this a bit later than usual. So if you watch it tonight on Friday, awesome. If you're like a Saturday or Sunday or whatever, please don't forget to go back to last week's video and make your comment about the giveaways because I'd love for everybody to enter and not have anybody that doesn't get to you. That's why I kept it open for two weeks because I know that some people probably haven't even watched last week's video and that's okay because I'm behind on my floss tube too. There's so many good videos. I think I may have made it out of May. I think maybe I haven't. I don't know. Anyway. All right, guys. I'm going to bid you a good farewell this week and we're going to say so long. Stitch well. I'll see you soon, my friends. Goodbye.